against the guys that you think they're going to have trouble with. So the guys who are coming in with two ERAs, ERAs below two, the guys who have been the aces of teams, they're able to beat those guys. And it's always the middling guys who have a 4.5 and up ERA that they have issues against. You are locked on Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gatsoulias. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Right now would be the part where I say, Hello to my co-host, Brian McKeon. He is not here. I am recording this on June 19th. For June 19th, we had technical difficulties during our normal recording time. We recorded about 20 minutes of what would have been today's episode, and it was awful. We were having major internet issues. So here I am solo. Before we get started, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast on whichever podcasting platform you prefer. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Like our videos, hit the bell so you're notified whenever our videos go live. Coming up on today's show, we preview Garrett Cole's season debut. It's finally here. It's tonight. It's tonight. By now, 12 hours from now, I'm recording this at 9.42 a.m. Hopefully the Yankees will be winning the game. And Garrett Cole will have pitched a, a good start. Let's hope. Let's hope. Um, In segment two, we're going to talk about Willie Mays because he passed away. We're going to discuss a funny map I saw on Twitter regarding most hated MLB teams. And I was kind of surprised by some of the places that hated the Yankees. We're going to discuss that. But first, let's talk about last night. We got to talk about the game. We have to talk about Judge, the roller coaster of the Aaron Judge hit by pitch. Let's get into it. So the Yankees beat the Orioles in the first game, as you all know by now, because it's, again, it's like 12 hours after that game ended last night as I record this. Good game. This is the type of game you want to see from the Yankees, and we've spoken about this on the show many times. You don't only want the Yankees to hit the crap out of the ball and beat up on teams. You want to see them beat teams in different ways. On Tuesday night, they beat the Orioles with good pitching. And basically small ball, you know, not a lot of big hits, meaning no home runs, a couple of sack flies. There were singles galore. And again, that's what you want to see from this team. You From a 51 win team, you want to see a variety of ways in how they can beat you. They can beat you with good pitching. They can beat you with 400 to 500 foot home runs from the big guys. They can beat you with big innings. They can beat you with big first innings. Saw that against the Royals last week. And they can also beat you with sack flies, which is what happened on Tuesday night. So Nestor Cortez, it was home Nestor Cortez. Six innings, five hits, no runs, no walks, and six strikeouts against a pretty tough Orioles lineup. Now, what was working for him last night, David Cohn mentioned this on the broadcast. His four-seamer and his cutter were both working. The Orioles were one for six off his four seam and one for nine off the cutter. And he did a really good job of keeping that team off the board. Well done by him. Nice rebound from him at home. He had a pretty good start his last time out, but his last start at home was not that great. And the story with him for the majority of 2024 is how he's so much better at home than he is on the road. He proved that on Tuesday night. Let's just hope he can figure out the road thing. Seemed like he did the last time out, but let's see if he can keep that going. So let's move to the offense. Like I said, they kept it small, but they did enough damage to knock out Suarez after only three and two-third innings. He came into the game with an ERA below two. The Yankees like to do this. This is another one of their patterns for the season against the guys that you think they're going to have trouble with. So the guys who are coming in with two ERAs, ERAs below two, the guys who have been the aces of teams, 
they're able to beat those guys. And it's always the middling guys who have a 4.5 and up ERA that they have issues against. Unfortunately, they're facing a guy like that tonight. So we'll see what happens with that. So Judge was hit by a pitch in the third inning. As we all know, he came out in the fourth to be in the field, but then couldn't bat because his hand was just not working. And this was basically everyone's reaction when that happened. Now, if you're not watching on YouTube, it's a gif of someone very angry. It's one of my favorite ones to use. I used to use it all the time uh, when the Yankees lost games. I haven't done that in a while and I might have to use it again. But they take him out. Uh, Trent Grisham pinch hits for him. Everyone's panicking, obviously, because you're getting Garrett Cole back. And then it looks like you're going to lose Aaron Judge because Mookie Betts was just hitting the hand with a pitch and he's going to be out possibly eight weeks. So it was a scary moment for Yankee fans. And then after the game, Judge came out and talked to the reporters and said, everything's good. He had a sly smile on his face. And Meredith Morakovitz was like, you know, what's going on? And he said, it's all, it's all good. He said that his x-rays were negative. The CAT scan or the CT scan was negative because they did all sorts of imaging on that hand. He was hit, if you're not watching on YouTube, he was hit basically like right where the pinky meets the hand. That's a bad place to get hit with a pitch. And I mean, it was direct right on that spot. So it's possible you don't see him in the lineup tonight. He might have to give his hand a little bit of a rest. So don't panic about that. And what was the other big story about Tuesday night? Ben Rice. Ben Rice. Okay. So first of all, Ben Rice looks like he's about 18, which is the funniest thing ever. And I don't know if you guys all saw this because some of you are not as online as say I am. And if you're not watching this on YouTube, I apologize, but they took a screenshot of Ben Rice talking to Shelly Duncan, manager of Scranton, who was telling him that he was being called up. And for the YouTubers, with the YouTube audience watching, here you go. His face is so funny. And we saw this before he got into the game, obviously. And then when you saw his reaction to his first hit and how happy he was, you kind of got why he looked like that. Why his reaction was like that. He grew up a Yankee fan. He liked Derek Jeter. He's playing for the Yankees. Couldn't get the smile off his face. I don't think I've ever seen someone get their first hit in major league baseball and smile from ear to ear going from home plate to first base. It was hilarious. He tried to get a high five from Travis Chapman, who wasn't even paying attention, attention to him at first base. Um, his roll call, he pretended to eat rice because his name is Ben Rice. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. No notes, Ben. I thought that was great. Um, so I mentioned the sack flies. That's right. I meant to mention this. The Yankees hit two last night, DJ LeMahieu and Glaber Torres. And now they have 27 sack flies on the season. It's the most in, Amer in, in the American League. It's the second most in MLB. At one point, they had 26. So they were tied for second most in baseball and they pulled ahead. They're also, get this, 22 and one in games when they hit at least one sack fly. And that's the best in baseball. So overall, it turned out to be a good night. When we were recording last night, when we first started recording, we didn't know about the result of judges x-rays. So it was kind of a somber feeling show. And then we got the news that he's okay. So that was good. Tonkin and Weaver threw scoreless innings, one apiece. They came in after Nestor. Holmes gave up a two-run home run to Santander. Um, no harm, no foul. The Yankees were up for nothing. You don't want to see your closer give up a home run <laughs> in the ninth inning, but he made it interesting, and then the Yankees won. So overall, it turned out to be a good night because when the Yankees won, 
and they didn't know what was wrong with Judge. You know, 12 hours ago at this point, 10 to 10, no one knew what was happening with Judge. And everyone was thinking worst case scenario because it's the Yankees and bad things tend to happen to them when things go good. And I don't know when this sort of bad luck happened for the Yankees, when the tides turned for them. But it never used to be like this. And now it's almost as if everyone is always waiting for the other shoe to drop. And that's no way to be a baseball fan. And that's no way to be a Yankee fan. We don't like this, baseball gods. You have to change that. So the Yankees win the first game. They have Garrett Cole going in game two. I'm going to talk about that in segment three. Coming up in segment two, we're going to discuss a baseball map. I'm going to show it to you. And we're going to discuss... Some of the findings, because it's interesting. But first, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button on our videos, hit the notification so you know when our videos go up. Also, reply to the pinned comment on our videos Monday through Thursday if you want your questions answered for Fan Mail Friday. We do it every week. It's a lot of fun. Or you can join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. I inundate you with texts about roster moves and all the stuff that was going on on Tuesday with all the different IL moves and all that stuff. So yeah, it's it's a fun time. You can text us questions. You can text us reactions to the game. I will try and text you back. There's a 14-day free trial. It's a lot of fun. So coming up next, like I said, we're going to look at a really strange baseball map. Locked on Yankees is sponsored by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, and eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Locked on Yankees is also brought to you by Prize Picks. We're now less than a month away from MLB's All Star game, so don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your Prize Picks entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your Prize Picks entry today. Prize Picks is the best way to get in on the action on sports in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. So Brian always tells you to pick the Yankees to score in the first inning, and they usually do. I would say maybe use your time to pick Garrett Cole to do something special in his season debut. If you have the skills to use prize picks, you can turn $10 into $100 with just a few taps. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players' stat types are what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Download the app today. Use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code locked on MLB for a $100 first deposit match. Welcome back to Locked On Yankees. Locked On Sports Today is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the noise. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Don't forget, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. So we got bad news yesterday. Willie Mays passed away at the age of 93. He died peacefully from what they said. And that's always a good thing. You don't want to hear someone at 93 dying of some illness. You want to hear about them just passing away, an old man lying in his bed. That's what you want. So Willie Mays, let's go through the numbers because they're incredible. Career batting average of 301, 660 home runs, 24 all-star selections. That's insane. One World Series, two NL MVPs, 12 gold gloves, 
he was the batting champ in 1954. He obviously made the Hall of Fame. He was named to the All Century team in 1999. Um, I will say this, you know, I wasn't born soon enough to see Willie Mays play. My dad saw him play. His uncle Gus was a big New York Giants fan, would bring my dad to the polo grounds, would also try to convert my dad from a Yankee fan into a Giants fan. My dad was not having that. Um, so he saw Willie Mays play at the polo grounds when he was a kid and a teenager. And my mother lived in Inwood, Manhattan, upper Manhattan. And she said that she would see Willie Mays when he was returning home from games. He lived in Riverdale in the Bronx. And those days you took the Harlem River Drive to Dykeman Street, would go across Dykeman Street to Broadway, take Broadway up to Riverdale. That's how he would get home. He'd wave to every kid who waved at him when he was going through Inwood. So I thought that was pretty cool. So rest in peace to Willie Mays, one of the best to ever play the game. It was a, it was a downer of a day with that news. So as I mentioned, we're going to look at a map. We have to look at this map. I saw it on Twitter and I thought it was really, really funny. Some of it not unexpected, but some of it a little shocking. So this, they called this uh, the map and it's most hated teams, like each state and Canadian province and territory, the teams that they hate. And I just found this so funny. So here you go. So if you're not on YouTube, I will tell you right now, there are big areas with Yankees, but that's because the Canadian provinces are huge. But I also need to know why Manitoba, Alberta, and British Columbia don't like the Yankees. Saskatchewan doesn't like the Red Sox. Quebec doesn't like the Red Sox. And for some reason, Nanavut, no, not Nanavut. Well, yeah, Nanavut doesn't like, is it, Nan no, it's none of it. That's how you say it. They don't like the White Sox. And the Northwest Territories don't like San Diego. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I just find this map hilarious. I think it's so funny. So the Yankees are obviously disliked in New England. They're also disliked in the lower part of the northeastern parts of Canada. So I guess that would be... Nova Scotia. I think Nova Scotia is in there. Newfoundland isn't there. They don't have anything. That's odd. And also there's a spot of the Yukon, because I don't think there are enough people in the Yukon territory to hate baseball, right? Because the Yukon's kind of vast and woodsy and stuff. If I remember from elementary school when we learned about the map of Canada. By the way, none of it wasn't there yet. So... And also Labrador and like, the, you know, the eastern part of Canada was also divided in a different way when I learned the Canadian map. I also learned the world map before the fall of communism. So all those little countries that broke off from the USSR took me into, until adulthood to even know that they existed because I'd be watching the news and finding out about these countries and going, what on earth is Azerbaijan? In no surprise. Well, actually, this is kind of surprising. The St. Louis Cardinals, they have a pretty big territory there. Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Iowa, Nebraska. Or is that, oh God. No, Nebraska doesn't like the Yankees. Kansas doesn't like the St. Louis Cardinals. That is strange. Arkansas doesn't like the Cubs for some reason. I don't know. Mississippi doesn't like the Yankees. North Carolina doesn't like the Yankees. New Mexico doesn't like the Yankees. What did the Yankees ever do to New Mexico? You don't even have a team. And funnily enough, the San Francisco Giants are the most hated team in California. I guess because of the number of Dodger fans, I'm assuming. And for some reason, the A's must have done something really bad to Utah because they're the most hated team in Utah. So I just thought that map was really funny. I, I don't I don't understand. You know, they probably interviewed or asked like five different people. Like, what team do you hate? 
And that's how they came up with that. Also, what did the Detroit Tigers do to Ohio? And why does Michigan hate the A's so much? That's strange. Also, Pennsylvania doesn't like the Cincinnati Reds. And Virginia doesn't like the Atlanta Braves. I find that odd. I do think the oddest thing is the Northwest Territories not liking San Diego. Are they jealous of the weather? Maybe that's what it is. Could that be what it is? Maybe it is. I think that might be it. Because at first I was looking at that and thinking, why on earth would the Northwest Territories not like the San Diego Padres? And then I realized, oh, right, their weather is not great up there. In San Diego, it's usually sunny, 72, perfect. You get the occasional rainy day, but it's not a lot. So, yeah, I can understand that. So, yeah, here, one more time. Look at this map just because it's funny. Also, why does South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama not like the Nationals? Do Braves fans not like the... I would think in that territory, it would be the... See, there are no Mets anywhere. This map is not right. This map isn't right. Because I feel like Atlanta, uh, Atlanta fans and Met fans don't really like each other. There's no Phillies on here. No, something's wrong with that map. Something's wrong with that map. So coming up next, Garrett Cole's back. Garrett Cole is back and he's pitching for the Yankees and we're going to preview it. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Life can be unpredictable, and Policy Genius can take away the worries of what your family would do if something happened. Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over the other, so you can trust their guidance. See thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs with Policy Genius. So check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB and click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. Here on Locked On Yankees, we pride ourselves on getting you the latest news for your team, whether it's the offseason, the draft, spring training, the playoffs, injury updates. It's year round. You know what else is year round? Collection season. Just because tax season is over doesn't mean the IRS will stop coming after you for unfiled taxes. The IRS can garner your wages levy your bank accounts, and even seize your property. Don't let the IRS target you. Let the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. With over 14 years of experience and an a rating by the Better Business Bureau, Tax Network USA has saved their clients over $1 billion in tax debt. Whether you owe taxes, have complicated matters that require tax planning, or finally hit that parlay this season and need help correctly filing, call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. See the link in the episode description below. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available in the free Fire TV channels app. And don't forget, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. So we're here. It's June 19th, and Garrett Cole is back. Yay! I mean, he's been with the team most of the time. He wasn't with them when he was making his rehab starts, but he was in the dugout for a lot of the time that he was rehabbing from his injury. He was acting as a de facto pitching coach. He was advising young Luis Heel and helping him out. 
and now he's back in the rotation. And up to this point, the Yankees have won 51 games without Garrett Cole in the rotation. The rest of the rotation, let's just give them credit, they stepped up big time. Because coming into the season, even before Cole was hurt, everyone was thinking about, is Rodon going to bounce back? What's Is Nestor going to bounce back? He has part of the time. How is Stroman going to perform? How is second-year Clark Schmidt going to do? And he was doing really well until his injury. Then Luis Heel steps in, and he becomes the ace of the team in Cole's absence. And you have to give credit to the rotation for doing what they did during his absence. So Garrett Cole facing off against Cade Povich. Povich is 0-1 with a 4.76 ERA. Right in the Yankees' wheelhouse for their kryptonite, 476. Ooh, I don't know. Garrett Cole could pitch a really good game against the Orioles, and the offense might not be able to do something against a guy with a 4.76 ERA. You never know. You never know. I'm just excited to see Cole, and I'm assuming they're going to have him on some sort of limit possibly, although they let him push it pretty far in his last rehab appearance, not lengthwise, but throwing wise, you know, he was touching 97 plus and pitching more like Garrett Cole and he was striking out people more and there will probably be a pitch limit. They don't want to rush him back too much, even though he's made a number of minor league rehab starts because you don't want him to come back and hurt himself. So look for that Wednesday night. Don't be surprised if he only pitches until the fifth or sixth inning, depending on how the Orioles look against him. I know Nestor shut them down last night, but you never know. They're, they're a pretty strong lineup, and it's hard to keep them down for too long. Uh, Cole, I think he does pretty well against the Orioles. I'm trying to remember how he performs against them. But I'm hoping that, you know, he has a positive season debut. I'm just happy he's back. It didn't turn out to be a season-ending thing because we're seeing that all over baseball. Um, hey, can't mention Garrett Cole without Alec Manoa. Alec Manoa had a combo elbow surgery the other day. So they they fixed the UCL, but they also put the internal brace in there. But it's going to be 12 to 14 months recovery for him. So the Blue Jays are not going to see him for a while. Um, but there are other pitchers around baseball with elbow injuries. I don't know. <laughs> People are saying that we're just noticing it more, but I, I think there's an uptick in elbow injuries. Something is going on. There are too many surgeries happening. We mentioned this when Cole got hurt. You know, the Rays, how many players they've lost to Tommy John and internal brace surgeries. I think there were six starters in the last three years that they've lost. They're without a couple of them now. Um, they had lost Tyler Glass now in 21 after the sticky stuff ban. He blew out his elbow and now he can't stop striking out people after getting Tommy John surgery. So it's good to have Cole back. It's good that Aaron Judge isn't really hurt. Like I said in the beginning of the show, don't be surprised if he's sitting out or maybe not playing the field, possibly. But I don't know how that part of your hand would affect your... No, because I don't know. I don't know. So just it's good news. It, it felt really bad last night. You know, you were happy the Yankees won the game. You were happy they looked good against the Orioles, but then you had this nagging thing in the back of your head thinking about judge and thinking about oh my god if he's out for a while this is going to be the worst thing that can happen to the team you know in our aborted <laughs> that's not a great choice of words but that's the word you use episode last night brian had mentioned that if this were to happen if this was like worst case scenario where judge does actually break something it's better to happen now than in august because if it were ha to happen in august He'd be out for a couple months. 
and then he'd be coming back either for the playoffs or right at the end of the season, not a hundred percent coming back from broken bones and it just wouldn't be a good thing. So this happening in June or, you know, if it had happened in June, it would have been better, but it didn't. He's fine. The x-rays were clear. Hopefully everyone read the imaging correctly and uh, didn't give him the wrong information because it's the Yankees. You never know. But I'm assuming that Dr. Christopher Ahmad, because I believe he was the one that was checking him out. They did the imaging at New York Presbyterian. Um, he's the team doctor. I'm assuming by now he knows how to look at x-rays and CT scans. So I, I think I think Judge will be OK. So, yeah, this is a good day for the Yankees. They won the first game of the series. Aaron Judge seems to be okay, and they get their ace back. The reigning Cy Young award winner, Garrett Cole, back in the rotation, back with the team as a full teammate, not just sitting on the bench and yapping, which they show on Yes all the time. I think it's hilarious. It's so funny. He talks so much to his teammates, but he seems that like that type of guy who has to talk all the time. So now he's in the rotation and oh one more thing that's right we were going to mention this on the show last night so this is the flurry of moves that were made before the game on tuesday night clayton andrews was recalled from AAA. he was sent right back down after the game didn't even go into the game anthony masevich uh was also selected they signed him to a major league contract um as we know ben rice he played in his first game the Yankees placed Ian Hamilton on the 15-day IL retroactive to June 17th. He has the right lat strain. Cody Poteet is on the 15-day injured list retroactive to the 15th with a right tricep strain. Obviously, Anthony Rizzo is on the IL. He's on the 10-day right now, but he'll be pushed to the 60. Or that maybe they, they might re-up it a couple times, but he'll probably be put on the 60 at some point with his right forearm fracture and they transferred Clark Schmidt to the 60 day IL. That's also not surprising. He wasn't coming back from two 15 day stints with his injury. So it's not, he isn't more injured. They're just putting him on the 60 day to make room for other people and move things around. So that's what's happening with the Yankees. One more time. Don't forget. You can leave questions for Fan Mail Friday under our pinned comment on the YouTube videos. You can also join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. There's a link in the description under our YouTube videos. There's a 14-day free trial. You get texts from us. You can text us questions. You can text us comments. You can text us reactions to the game. Last night was fun after what happened with Judge. Yeah, it, it was a lot. Um, like I said, 14 day free trial. It's a lot of fun. So you can try it out. If you don't like it, you don't have to stay, but if you do like it, stay cause it's fun. And remember you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. So that'll do it for this edition of lockdown Yankees. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias and we will see you hopefully tomorrow. <laughs>